Welcome to Chapter 4. Chapter 4 will be covering on energy analysis of closed system. Now remember in Chapter chapter 1, uh, I explained to you what's a closed system, isn't it? Yeah. So what's a closed system? Yeah. Closed system is when the mass uh, doesn't go in and out. Yeah. The only thing mass is stuck inside here. The only thing that goes in and out is the energy. So that's a closed system. Now remember, like what I've told you earlier, there will be only, the word will be used. Yeah, no more explanation on what's closed system, what's open system. So you should know, you should know what is it by now. Okay, so this is the objective of the chapter and this is what we are covering throughout the chapter. Yeah, so in this first video, I'll be covering chapter 4.1. Okay, 4.1 is on moving boundary work. Okay, moving boundary work. Yeah, I'm just turning my textbook to uh, chapter 4. Yeah. Okay, moving boundary work. So, the expansion and compression work in the piston cylinder. If Okay, your moving boundary work is FDS. Yeah, force times displacement. So, what is force? Force is pressure times area. Uh, multiply with displacement, right? So, area and displacement is actually volume. ADS gives PDV, uh, DV, yeah, volume. Yeah? So, that's the reason why your work boundary becomes PDV. Pressure times width, volume. Okay. So, this is a closed system. Can you see this is a closed system where mass is actually stuck inside. Yeah. And then what we have here is that the, uh, the mass is uh, stuck inside. Yeah. Okay. Energy will go in and out. But now in this case, we are only looking at work boundary, not energy. Okay. So, work boundary is positive for expansion. For expansion. And work boundary is negative for compression. What I told you about quasi-equilibrium process, quasi-equilibrium process is a very slow and steady. So, at all time, it's nearly in equilibrium at all times. Yeah. So, the work associated with the, move, with the moving boundary is called the boundary work. So, this is the name. Yeah. This is a closed system and then we have the, the top here moving up and down. It's called the boundary work. Okay. So, now, when you do work, so when you look at this PV diagram, so how do you plot the, the line? You see you have A, B, C. So in the first place, how do you plot this process path? So we have, let's say we have a piston representing, this is representing volume 1, this is representing volume 2. Okay. Of course, when it's light, uh, when it's, uh, the volume is small here, the pressure will be high. And when the volume increases, the pressure goes lower, right? Because there's an expansion. So this is the process path. Remember what I, I have also explained to you what's the process path? Okay, now, uh, so now we have boundary work done depends on the path that's followed. Example, your toll or your petrol. It depends on the path that you take from your house to Sunway, right? If NPE, different value. If uh, Federal Highway, different value. Yeah, so different, different path gives you different um, conditions, different values of work. So in this case, like work A, work A is uh, 10 kilojoule. Okay, and then we have work B is 8 kilojoule and work uh, C is 5 kilojoule. So, if you see here, what is this work A, work B and work C? It is the work boundary. Yeah, it is the work boundary. But work C represents the area under the PV graph. And work A represents the area under the A graph. So, if you see area A is much bigger than area C. So, that's the reason value A is bigger than value C. Now, there's also net, network. Network. So, what is network? Network is mostly done during a cycle. What's the cycle? You start, you go to a state 2 and then you come back to the start. So, that is a work done. Okay. So, we are done with this part. So, area. Area is actually your, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, integration of P, D, V. Means area is the area under this line. Yeah, you have studied in your maths, right? So, in the area under the process curve PV uh, diagram is equal in magnitude to the work done during the quasi-equilibrium expansion or the compression process of a closed system. Okay, so we are done with this slide. Okay, now I'm going to uh, introduce to you a few terms. Yeah, few terms before I go in into an example of a calculation. So, polytropic process, isothermal process and isobaric process. I think isothermal you know, right? Temperature is constant. Isobaric you know is pressure is constant. What is polytropic? 
Okay, polytropic is a condition. The most students find it difficult to digest this polytropic process. Yeah, so you just pay attention. Polytropic process is a condition. Yeah, where it has a polytropic component. So this is a polytropic process. Okay, so for polytropic process, yeah. Uh, so what we have here, work boundary is uh, P two B two minus P one B one one minus N. So that is a polytropic process. Uh, um, what you call um, uh, for equation. Whereas for an isothermal equation, this is the uh, boundary work boundaries formula. Whereas for pressure, this is the formula. Okay, so different formulas has got a different condition has got different formula for work boundary. Okay, so now and then you have this path here. Can you see PV path here? So this is actually representing the area under the graph. Okay, so with that we have ended the uh, chapter 4.1. I'm just going to go to an example. I'm going to show you some calculation here. Okay, let's look at this. This is a constant pressure process. Constant pressure process. So, which, which one do you choose? Constant pressure? This one, right? Yeah, this one. Huh? Okay. So, oh, sorry. Supposed to be highlighting it and I scribbled it. Okay. So, that is the formula for constant process. So, let's get back to the calculation. A frictionless piston cylinder contains 5 kilograms. Mass is 5. Steam is 400 kilopascal. The temperature is 200. Heat is now transferred to the steam until the temperature reaches 250. So, if the piston is not attached to the shaft and the mass is constant, determine the work done by the steam. So, what we have here, just plug in the values that's given to you. You know the work boundaries formula, which is M multiply P naught V2 minus V1. So, there are few things that you may need to find. Yeah. So, from the superheated table. Uh, A6, yeah, superheated table A6. What is table A6? You remember at the back of your textbook? You just have to move to the back of your textbook, yeah. Okay, so we have table A6. Okay, table A6. Okay, let's look at this. Yeah, so what is the condition? 400 kilopascal, 200. Yeah, 400 kilopascal, 200. So, for 400 kilopascal, Mm, and transferred and okay. The first condition is oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. So I'm gonna write down the condition so it's easier for us to understand. Yeah, I'm gonna enlarge this. So the first state is what 400 degree C, yeah, and the uh, pressure 400 degree C, A, and the uh, what is the pressure? Pressure is constant. Oh, uh, for uh, sorry, 200 degree C, 200 degree C, pressure is 400 kPa. Second condition is 250, 250 and 400 kilopascal. So, first thing is, you may ask me, why are you referring to able A6? Yeah, so let's read the question again. Huh? Did they mention what type of steam? Okay, they didn't mention what type of steam. Okay, first thing is, we need to check. We need to check whether it's superheated or whatever. We know it's not cool liquid, yeah, because this is steam, yeah. They have mentioned the steam, right? But how to know whether it's superheated or not? So we have written down the condition, which is state one, 200, two hundred uh, two two hundred degree C, four hundred kilopascal. State two, two hundred fifty, four hundred kilopascal. Can you see this graph that's being plotted here? This graph is very important. So we need to, in order to solve this thing, we have this value. We have this value. We don't have the V2 and V1. So, we need to find the V2 and V1. Okay, go to this table. Don't go to table A6 first. First, we have to determine whether it's superheated or, uh, or, or what it call superheated or cooled. Yeah? So, now you go to table temperature. Temperature is constant. Uh, yeah, you can go to table temperature. Okay, I always like to refer to table temperature. In table temperature... Okay, in table temperature, if you see 200 degrees C, the pressure is 1554. So, what does it tell you? So, the pressure is much lower than this, right? 1554. Remember in the previous lesson, if the pressure is lower, then it is superheated steam. Okay, it's superheated steam. So, you know that at 200, the pressure is supposed to be 1554. But in this case, the pressure is 400 kilopascal. So, which means you cannot use table A4, yeah, okay. Or you can also look at 400 the kilopascal, huh? you see 400 kilopascal. 
at pressure 400 kilopascal, the temperature is supposed to be 143. But what you have now is 200 degrees C. Okay, 200 degrees C. It means what? It's superheated steam. So it means we cannot use table A4 or table A5. We have to go to table A6. So in table A6, what is the pressure? 400 kilopascal. 400 kilopascal is 0 0.4 megapascal, right? Okay, so we know we have to look here. Okay, now what is the temp uh, temperature? You go to 200, put a ruler down there. Okay, 200, you put a ruler there. So what is the value that you want? You want the value of volume. So you put a ruler and then you highlight this. Ah, that's the volume. Okay, and then the same 0 0.4, you have another value, 250, right? So he's down here. So the, both the values are side by side, you're very lucky. So take the value, bring it here. Can you see the value is being copied here? Okay, you put into the formula, can you see? And then you solve it. So what is the work boundary? 122 kilojoule. Okay, so now if you have any issues at all, please do ask me during the consultation hours. We have finished with our video 1. Thank you.